me because you know just what I need. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, he does. You know just what I need. Today, I want to speak to you for just a few minutes from the thought, if you can believe it, if you can believe it. And I want to take as my focus text from the New Living Translation, all praise to God the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, We are waiting on you. For Lord, nothing can happen in the way that it should apart from you. And Lord, in your word, you said, where two or more are gathered together there Will you be in the midst? Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Let your power come down. Fill this place, God, with your Holy Spirit. From front to back, side to side, and top to bottom. Fill this room. Fill each person under the sound of my voice. Oh God, show up and show out. For we need a word from you. Speak, Lord. Speak. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. If you can believe it. Back uh, in about 2001, a movie came out entitled uh, The Princess Diaries. Mia, played by Anne Hathaway, was a social misfit. She had terrible hair, funny clothes, and possessed absolutely no self-confidence. She was a girl who, at best, could be described as strange, awkward, and clumsy. When she wasn't being ignored, she was bullied by Josh, a boy that she had a crush on, and his girlfriend, Lana. She was terrified of public speaking. And more than anything else in the world, as she wished she was invisible. And one day, just before her 16th birthday, Mia learned that her paternal grandmother was in town and wanted to meet her. And after meeting with her grandmother for the very first time, Mia learned that her grandmother was in reality Queen Clarice Rinaldi, and Mia's late father was actually the crown prince of Genovia. Well, you can imagine her shock and surprise. One minute, uh, she had been a shy, klutzy, unsophisticated teenager, and in the next, she was a princess, an heiress, if you will, to the Genovian throne. We should all be so lucky, right? 
Now, mo while most of us would uh, jump uh, at the chance to be royalty, for Mia, it took uh, some convincing. She had to be uh, persuaded to believe uh, that she could become who she was meant to be. But finally, uh, she agreed. And so after being given princess lessons, a, a glamorous makeover, a limousine and a bodyguard, <laughs> hmm? she was finally transformed from an average, awkward teenage girl into a graceful and elegant and virtuous crown princess. Now, while most guys like those rock 'em, sock 'em, knock 'em down movies, I think most of us girls like those romantic kind of stories, the ones that my husband often refers to as chick flicks. <laughs> but no matter our gender or our age, I think that we can all agree that we all like a story with a happy ending. Now, would it surprise you to know this morning that some fairy tale stories have a basis in reality? I'm not talking about the kind with elves and gnomes and dwarves and giants, but the kind that is filled with characters who are blessed with an uncommon kind of happiness. I'm talking this morning about the kind with characters whose life events are characterized by joy. I'm talking this morning about the kind with characters who experiences ultimately lead to what a lot of us would call a fairy tale kind of ending. And would it surprise you, church, to know today that some of those very kinds of characters are sitting in this church right now? All right. Yeah. Hmm. Keeping uh, that concept in mind, I want to present three points. A consideration, a transformation, and a realization. Right. My first point is a consideration. Uh, the scripture says this morning that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Yet, as we go about our day-to-day -day living, as we encounter challenges in this world, when we struggle with personal issues, it becomes difficult to remember that we, who belong to Jesus, are blessed. Mm -hmm. Yet God is, always uh, has been, and always will be in the blessing business. You see, in the Bible, when it speaks of God's intentions toward his people, some form of the word bless is used, in fact, more than 500 times. Even so, believing that we are blessed is often difficult for a lot of us. You see, we can't believe that we're blessed when we get a bad report from the doctor. It's a little hard to get that idea of blessing in focus when we're faced with the loss of a loved one. The concept of blessing may not be the first thing that comes to our mind when we're weighed down with a burden of debt. Uh, the notion, church, uh, of blessing can be a little bit ambiguous if we're in the depths of depression. Come on. The possibility uh, of blessing this morning is a little bit hard to hold on to when some of our relationships uh, are on the line. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. But the fact remains, church, uh, that all Christians, whether we recognize it or not, whether we can feel it or not, whether we can see it or not, all Christians are blessed. Oh, come on, preacher. How can I be blessed when uh, I just lost my job? How is it that I can be blessed if my car or my home has been repossessed? How am I blessed when I'm so doggone deep uh, in debt? And I would answer this morning, it all depends 
on how we understand the difference between blessing and a little word called benefit. Mm -hmm. You see, there's a close connection between blessing and benefit. You see, a new car is a benefit, but contentment is the blessing. Job stability is a benefit, uh huh, but hope uh, is a blessing. A dream, a vacation is a benefit, but happiness is a blessing. You don't hear me this morning, church. Uh, A beautiful home is a benefit, but satisfaction is the blessing. You see, what I'm trying to tell you this morning, church, is that blessings can lead to benefits, but benefits are not necessarily an indicator of a blessing. Am I right about it? You see, just because a person has a whole lot of worldly benefits doesn't mean it's the result of God's blessing. You don't hear me this morning, church. You see, and without God's blessing, there is no satisfaction no matter how many material benefits you may have. Yeah. You may also ask this morning, uh, then where are the benefits of God's blessing, preacher? Yeah. The benefits are in the believing. Uh-huh. Someone once said, God's blessings come abundantly, but how much we receive depends on how much our heart believes. Am I right about it? That's right. Look, church, God is willing to bless us, but we have to be willing to believe God. Uh We have to believe, church, that we are selected and elected to receive the blessings of God. We have to believe, church, that we are anointed and appointed to be the children of God. We have to believe, church, uh, that we are uplifted and gifted by the grace of God. We have to believe, church, that we are revealed and sealed by the protection of God. We have to believe, church, uh, that we are adopted and co-opted into the kingdom of God. We have to believe, church, uh, that we are being primed so at the appointed time we can receive the benefits of God if you can believe. Uh That brings me to my second point, a transformation. Church, the time has come for us to come to terms with who we really are. What do I mean by that? Yes, sir. Come on. Right. Talk to us. You see, what we typically do is describe ourselves by what we do. Uh-huh. I'm a mail carrier. I'm a hairdresser. I'm a singer. Or where we come from, I'm from the country. I'm from New York. I'm out of Compton. Or by what someone says about us, I'm a knucklehead. I'm a no good. I'm unattractive. But garbage collector church is not who we are. It's what we do. Country bumpkin is not who we are. It's where we're from. Mm Hmm? Unacceptable church is not who we are, but it's a box that somebody else has tried to put us in. Church, we are not defined by people's opinions of us. Am I right about it? We're not defined uh, by our past mistakes. Uh, We're not defined by our present circumstances. Oh, you don't hear me this morning. You see, Mia, in, in the Princess Diary, She was not an awkward, funny-looking kid. She was a princess in waiting. But she had to learn and accept and believe who she really was before she could receive the blessings and the benefits of her position. Let me tell it another way. Eddie Murphy, in coming to America, was not a fast food worker. He was the prince of Zamunda. Come on, somebody. And when he acknowledged who he really was, then once again, he could enjoy the blessings and the benefits that come with being a prince. David was not a shepherd boy. He was the king of Israel. You don't hear me, church. Moses 
was not a stutterer. He was a, a leader and a prophet. Uh, Mary was not a peasant girl. She was the mother of God. She, uh, uh, Rahab was not a prostitute. She was a helper of God. Peter was not just a fisherman. He was an apostle of God. Jesus was not just a carpenter. He was the son of God. Come on, somebody. In the same way, church, we are not street sweepers, clerical workers, or doctors. We are not IT techs, uh, professors. We're not country, bougie, or uppity. We're not slow. We're not fast or anything in between. We are who God says we are, children of God. And in case you didn't know it, that makes us part of the royal family. Amen. And every day, on a day-to-day -day basis, God is giving us a makeover. All right. Am I right about it? Yes. Uh -huh. In some circles, they call that sanctification. Mm. Come on. And church, as we increasingly learn to accept, believe, and live out who we really are, we increasingly gain access to the blessings and benefits of God. Let me say that again. As we increasingly learn to accept and believe, somebody say believe, believe. who we really are, we increasingly, somebody say increasingly, Gain access to the blessings and benefits of God. What are you talking about, preacher? You, you, you sound kind of out of this world. My point exactly. John says in 1 and 2, But to all who believed and accepted him, gave he the right, mm -hmm, that is the power, to become the children of God. I'm talking this morning about Transformation. Somebody say transformation. transformation. From bl plain Jane to princess. Uh, from average Joe uh, to crown prince. For you see, it's not the lawyer who receives the blessing, but the child of God. You don't hear me, church. It's not the European that receives the blessing, but the child of God. It, it, it's not the health care worker that gets the blessing, but the child of God. It's not the millionaire who gets the blessing, but the child of God. It, it's not the CEO, the CFO, the superintendent, or the judge that receives the blessing, but the child Amen. of God. What does that mean, a preacher? Come on, talk to us. You're not raggedy. You're royalty, if you can believe it. You're not frumpy. You're fantastic, right. if you can believe it. You're not tacky. You are terrific, if you can believe it. I'm not just saying some words this morning, church, but this is a living and dynamic reality assigned to it, my brothers and sisters, all the importance that is due to the meaning of being a child of God. Now, I'm not suggesting to you this morning that you should be arrogant or prideful, but rather knowledgeable and encouraged about who you are. That's it. That's it. For you see, the child of God is not an average, ordinary, everyday person. We're supposed to be church, spiritually speaking, out of this world. Am I right about it? We may look like everybody else. We may dress like everybody else. And sometimes, heaven forbid, that we should. We may get up and go to work like everybody else but we are not like the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Bible says we are in the world, but not of the world. Right. You see, at one time, we were sinners, but now we're God's kids. Mm -hmm. At one time, we were lost, 
but now we're God's kids. Uh, at one time, we were slaves, but now we're God's kids. At one time, church, we were subject to the whims of this world, but now, thanks be to God, as children of God, we have, as the Bible says, overcome the world. You see, what I'm trying to tell you this morning, church, is that while the rest of the world remains guilty, the charges against us have been dropped. Amen. If you can believe it. That brings me to my final point, a realization. No matter what you may be facing this morning, no matter what someone has said to you in the past, no matter how folk may have treated you, Christians are not just anybody. We are somebody who is important to God, if you can believe it. Amen. Ephesians 1 and 5 says that God decided in advance to adopt us, uh -huh, that's all of us, into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. In other words, church, God chose us, each of us, on purpose for a purpose. We're not here today by accident, but we're here according to a plan. God's choice of us is not arbitrary, but deliberate. It's not haphazard, but intentional. We're not an afterthought, but we are a forethought according to the knowledge of God. In other words, church, uh, when uh, the teams were being set up for the game of life, God chose us to be on his side. He picked us uh, over all others, yeah. above every other in this world. We were designed to be assigned to a place of honor in Christ if you can't believe it. Ephesians uh, 1, 13 and 14 says, Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. Amen. In the beginning, we were created, anticipated, and animated. But in the world, we were berated, captivated, delated, and frustrated. After God saw our dilemma, we were located, updated, reinstated, and elevated in Christ Jesus. You don't hear me, church. When we said yes to Jesus, when we believed the gospel, when we received the salvation of God, we went from run of the mill to royalty. If uh, you can believe it, uh, he moved us from victim uh, to victor. Uh, if uh, you can believe it, uh, from salvage uh, to salvaged. Uh, if uh, you can believe it, uh, from ridiculed uh, to redeemed. Uh, if you can believe it, uh, we serve a God uh, that took our mess uh, and changed it uh, into our message. Uh, he took our tragedy uh, yeah. and turned it uh, into a transformation. Uh, he took our dilemma and used it uh, yeah. for our deliverance. Uh, if uh, you can believe it, uh, for seeing uh, is not believing, uh, but believing uh, is seeing uh, the unlimited, uh, immeasurable, exponentially increasing uh, favor uh, of God. If uh, you can believe it, uh, if uh, you can believe it, uh, for believing uh, you will see uh, the benefits uh, and blessings uh, of God. If uh, you can believe it, uh, for in believing uh, you will see uh, the provision of God. In believing uh, you will see uh, the deliverance uh, of God. If, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if uh, you can, uh, if you can, uh, if you can believe it, uh, being drug free uh, is possible with God. Getting a healing uh, is possible with God. Getting elected uh, is possible with God. Getting a new job uh, is possible with God. If, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if uh, 
if uh, you can believe it.